All right, hello. This is Drawing with Michael, episode two. And today we're gonna learn how to draw some mountains. One moment, I'm just, I just like to test this at the beginning with my phone to see if I'm actually live. Um, because it's hard to tell. I think I should be. Anyways, well, so today we're going to draw mountains, and I downloaded a picture of uh, Mount Shasta and Mount Lassen. This one's actually Mount Lassen. This one's Mount Shasta. Uh, just, just making sure this is going. I don't see it, so that probably means you don't see it. One of these days we'll get this right. By we, I mean me. Oh, okay, I'm here. All right. Let me just pull it up so I can see your comments. By we, I mean. All right. So, this is Drawing with Michael. Today, we got mountains, like I just said. I don't know why it's not pulling up on my phone. Um, let me know if anybody else is having trouble with that, but it pulls up on my computer just fine. Um... I printed out a black and white version of these pictures, but I'm going to keep right he here on the screen, I'm going to keep a colored version of the picture that I'm drawing off of. Um, I know it's probably a little small, but I could make it bigger when, when needed like this. Now get back down. All right. Drawing mountains with Michael. All right. So I covered it up here, but the last time when we were drawing cats, and if you haven't seen that video, you can go ahead and watch Drawing Cats with Michael, where I ramble a lot because I'm just trying to figure this out, and I'll try not to ramble as much today. <laughs> but yes, the thing I wrote down here says, biggest shapes first. Hi, Kathy and Blake. So if you want to draw anything, I think the important thing is to look at the picture you want to draw and look for the biggest shapes. So those shapes could be those shapes could be rectangles. I think I'm a little too loud. Could be rectangles or triangles or circles. So we'll just look. Um, today I'm going to try to make it a challenge. I started it last time drawing with a crayon, but where every drawing I do is with a different type of pencil or pen or something. Um, so this one is uh, just a sharpie, blue sharpie. And uh, I'm going to draw this with a blue sharpie and let's get started. So it, if you have anything at home to draw on, it could be, I'm mean, just using regular printer paper, but you could use nicer paper or you could use, um, you know, look in your recycling bin. I have a picture of a cat from last time. I could draw right on the back of that, or I could draw on, a, you know, a piece of mail that you're going to throw away, something like that. Anything that you draw on, it doesn't need to be uh, something to hang up on the wall. It could be just something for practice, which is how I like to look at um, pretty much any time I do art, is it's practice. Sometimes the practice yields a beautiful painting or a cool drawing, but not all the time, so it's good to view your work as practice when possible. Okay, so looking at this picture, this picture, or this picture, um, looking for the biggest shapes. Hmm, now what do I mean shapes? Let's see. I think this is a really clear shape, so this the shape of the water, um, which would be a big rectangle. So here's my big rectangle. So that's one big shape. Another shape might be the shape of the sky. Now, it might be tempting to look at the shape of the mountain. And you could do that too. But I like to think of the sky as its own shape. So it's kind of got this triangle here. And then it goes down and up like that. So that's one big shape. So we have rectangle, shape number one. This, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, a triangle and a half 
I don't know, round shape there. That'd be shape number two. Number three might be, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a split where the tree and the mountain, where the tree line is dark and then it kind of lightens up. It's probably a hill, a hill going down and then back up to the mountain. But that line right here, this tree line, all the way down to the, all the way down to the water would be another shape. And then maybe you could call these shapes too, little two tree shapes. So if I was to draw this really small, maybe I'll try to draw a really small version right here. This is a good exercise too. Try to draw a really small version. I would have the water. Here, I'll zoom into my small, small picture. Hi, Diane. I hope you're doing well. I'm going to show how to draw a mountain in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of playing with it. So this little thing right here, I'm going to make a tiny version. So I've got the, the water rectangle at the bottom. Now I'm going to do the, the, the sky shape, which was like a, this. And then I've got the shape of the tree line, somewhere like this. And then I've got these two big trees here. So one and two. So there's my small tiny version of the drawing. Um, I can uh, kind of reflect the how this area is darker than these two areas. So what I'll just do like this. Color this in, color that in. That's darker. This is even a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna do less lines. And then the water. I'm going to use horizontal lines, not very many. And then maybe a little cloud, cloud in the sky. There. That's my thumbnail sketch version. Now I'll zoom back out. I like to do thumbnail sketches like that. Um, before I do big paintings, because it kind of helps me um, get my thoughts together and plan out some of the choices that are easy to change on a one inch drawing but hard to change on a big painting um tell oh diane blake and kathy also say hi but you might be able to see their words that they type too um let me show you a couple mountains that i've painted in the last a month or two um, before, before I get started on this one, just in case anybody else shows up. Uh, this one's actually another one of Mount Shasta. This was a watercolor. Actually, all these are watercolors. Um, Mount Shasta, a lot more snow in this picture. It's kind of a... I did this for a painting class at 7th Street. This one I just did last night for my... For my brother, I'm going to give it to him as a present for his anniversary. Uh, I don't know if you can see that very well, but uh, he's, uh, this was a picture his uh, wife took of him on their honeymoon a year ago today. Um, he was hiking in the mountains somewhere. Um, and this is not quite a mountain picture, but I did this one two days ago or something. It's like a coming out of Bidwell Park, but there's little tiny mountains up here. I'm not sure what range that is um, when you're leaving Upper Bidwell. Maybe some, one of you knows which mountain range that is. It only got a little bit of snow. Okay, without further ado, let's do this with a blue Sharpie. Draw this. So the first shape I drew on my little one and the first one we outlined was where the water is. This straight line goes straight across the whole page. Now where does it go? Does it go towards the top or towards the bottom? Let's see, where's this line? It's, here would be like midway, here's the middle, and it's below the middle, maybe halfway between the bottom and the middle, so kind of towards the bottom. Let's do like right there. Seems like the right spot. 
Now, if I really wanted to get accurate, especially because I printed this on the same size paper, I could draw it over here, and then I would know that's exactly where that line is. Um, maybe we'll use some of the vertical measurements like that. But that might be a clever way to do it, is whatever you're drawing, draw it the same exact size right next to it, so you can so you can measure, okay, the tree, the top is here, the bottom is here. And you could get it right. But for now, we're using brain power. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm learning, I only actually started painting about at Christmas time. And uh, I've just been doing it every day and it, it really pays off, go figure, to practice something every day. So that's what we're here for. Um, or you could just watch and enjoy. I'll, I'll Bob Ross it um, if you don't feel like actually drawing. Um, I'll keep uh, talking. Okay, so I got this big line. Got that. The next one I wanted to do with the, was the sky. So this, where the sky hits the, hits the side of the paper here is about the same distance from this side as the, as the water was. So I'm gonna make a mark there. Yeah, it's kind of a couple inches from the top or bottom. And it ends a little bit lower down actually. So not quite here, maybe like, yeah, here. You can kind of eyeball it, especially with uh, landscapes. With people, with faces and um, even cats. It's easy, if you make a little bit of a mistake, it already, it'll, it looks uh, not like a cat anymore. <laughs> but with a mountain, if you have something measurement wrong, it still looks like a mountain. Unless you, uh, you gotta really try to mess up a mountain. Okay, so let's see. So it's one big curve going down, down and then up like that. That's actually like this S curve. It's a beautiful line in art and it's called an arabesque. Arabesque. It's actually, it's also a dance, a ballet move. When you, I think when you stand on one foot and put your arms forward, but an arabesque, ah, beautiful shape. So that's where we got here, a huge arabesque in the sky, essentially. And then it comes up to a point and then there's a little mountain. So I'll do the little mountain first there. And then I'm going to draw this big arabesque in one fluid motion. Yeah, something like that. I might have flattened out the mountain a little bit, but that's okay. All right. So the next line is this tree line going across. Now I here, I just drew a straight line just to measure it. But actually, if you look closely, and now I'll zoom into this picture here. If you look closely at the, I don't know how to point to this, <laughs> okay. Let's see, right there, that uh, the tree line where the darker trees are and it goes across, it kind of does this. It's not a straight line because of the top of the trees. It's kind of a jagged line. And there's actually a smaller one here at the base of the mountain another jagged line, but just uh, smaller teeth on the jagged line. So let's keep that in mind and I'm bring this down. All right, so the water made a nice flat line. So I made a flat line, but this one I'm gonna make, this one I'm gonna make uh, a little bit jagged. So like this, all the way across, jag, 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 jag. Jagged just means kind of this, almost like small waves. I'm actually gonna stop where I think the trees are, somewhere around here, just cause I'm gonna draw trees in front of it and I could just try to go really dark on the tree so it covers this line up, but I'm just gonna leave it to help myself out. So we got that line. Now let's do this uh, more jagged line of the closer trees. It's more jagged because the trees are closer and bigger, so their points are also bigger. So we start here. We're just gonna do another jagged line. Just 
stopping at about that same spot. There. All right. Um, let's see. Got that? What's the next biggest shape that we see here? There's a light line. The line of trees as it goes up the mountain is kind of interesting. It's uh, a little bit more subtle, but I'm going to just kind of go for it. It's, it's not, I think it's so far away that it's not really jagged, even though it is made of trees. So I'm going to just kind of approximate that line like that. That's just uh, kind of the uh, the darker area here that I just outlined. Um, and we'll fill these in with texture, which is the main probably part of drawing landscapes is the texture. Um, if you look at this one from what I did yes last night, uh, I don't know if it's going to be too reflective, but all the texture of the trees and of the rocks is really what the painting is about. It, the mountains in the background are almost kind of blurry, but especially as you get closer to the foreground, um, texture really takes over. So when I'm drawing landscapes, the big shapes are f fun, but not as important as uh, the small shapes you're doing with your brush or with your pen or whatever. So we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so I'm realizing I made this line very smooth and round, but if we look at our mountain here, it's actually got um, kind of uh, ridges along the top. It's not perfectly round, though it is actually pretty round. So I'm just going to notch it up a little bit. So we'll do more like like this. Um, there's a big, there's a notch on the top, probably where the volcano area was. And then it kind of goes up and then down. So more like, more jagged. You might actually, when drawing um, organic shapes like curves and um, circles, Sometimes instead of doing a curve, you're better suited to do like a, some people like doing like this, where you just are drawing straight shapes to make a curve. Um, I tend to do the curve because I like the challenge of it, but it's actually a little easier to get measurements correct if you're doing more like that. Um, so, whatever suits you. Okay, let's see. So, um... Now that I've got my basic shapes in, now I'm worried about, not worried, I'm concerned with the darks and lights. So let's see which shape is the darkest all the way to which shape is the lightest shape. Um, you can see it in the uh, digital picture here, the color one, here. <laughs> uh, but you can almost see it better in my black and white printout here. Which, which is the darkest shape? So do you think that the water, the lower trees, the upper trees, the mountain, or the sky is the darkest? I think it's this. Actually, I can see that it's this for the front trees. So the picture kind of has like a bright area for the water. The, these trees are the darkest than like a medium dark. And then the mountain looks about the same darkness as the water, interestingly enough. And then the brightest area is the sky. So we got to keep that in mind and make sure that no matter what tool we're using, it's, this would be a lot easier with a pencil because you could just press harder on the darker areas and, and draw lighter on the lighter areas. But with something like a Sharpie, you can't press harder or lighter you don't you don't you get the same amount of ink on there so you have to do something else called hatching or you could do scribbling yeah good job kathy blake the lower trees um you could do something called hatching which we've done and i know blake has done in uh, art class 
where you just draw a bunch of little lines next to each other. And that's called hatching. You can do cross hatching, which would be little lines going the opposite way on top of it. And that makes kind of a dark area that's not, uh, you can control the level of darkness. So if I space out my lines, that's this one's gonna be darker than this one. Even though they're both done with a Sharpie that only has one color. So we'll take that same principle, but I'll do it kind of in a tree shape. So let me zoom into that tree. Let's see. Just look at the, the dark trees in the foreground. Hmm, what kind of mark could I make to make it look like those trees? Especially the black area. It's kind of a zigzag, vertical zigzag thing going on. So, that gets smaller at the top because they're trees. So that's what I'll try. So what do I mean by vertical zigzag? I mean something like this. That's smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom. Looks like a tree, kind of, right? Now, one, one or two wouldn't look like much, but if I populate this whole area um, with that, which this might take a minute, and I want to pr pay particular attention to the tops and the bottoms, the edges, because um, that's where they hit something else. Like, this is, hits the water, so I don't want to color into the water. Um, and the tops go into a lighter tree area, so I don't want to go too far into that either. And actually, right at the bottom of the trees, between the water and the trees, is a small area of grass. This light green. Um, point to it. How do I point to it? There we go. This light green sliver. So I'm actually going to try to keep that white on my, which is going to be a little bit tricky, so I'll have to do the bottom of my zigzags um, and have them end before this line of water, but just a hair. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go quickly, but you can spend, if you're doing this at home, you can spend some time on this, this part. So I'm just going to down these Verticals really keeping in mind that the top's supposed to be smaller than the bottom and then when I run out of space instead of just covering over the next one I'm just stopping and going to the next one so that that should create some kind of uh, depth like there's Almost like there's one tree in front of the next tree And again, I'm stopping at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in while I'm doing this because this is going to take me a minute. I'll zoom in so you can kind of see a little bit closer what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry for my clunkiness on this program. All right. Yeah. You can kind of see already it's starting to give it a little bit of a tree illusion. What, um, as an artist, we're not trying to get it exact. Um, we're kind of giving our impression or our, our own take on what something looks like. So when I looked at these trees, they looked just kind of like that shape. And since I've tried many little scribbles out over the years, I know this one has that look. Just back and forth quick scribbles. Mm -hmm. I hear Olive in the other room listening to some Disney music. She's playing with Play-Doh. Trying to keep it creative around here. Now I, I uh, kind of messed up this bottom line and went down a little bit. So, I don't know. I'm just going to blow right through it. What did Bob Ross say? He said, happy little accident, or happy little trees. And he also had happy accidents. And that just means if you mess up, that's just gonna add charm. Especially if you do a big drawing with lots of parts on it. One little mess up, nobody's gonna notice. And you're probably gonna mess up a bunch of times. And all those mess ups together kind of give 
your individual drawing character, I think. Um. All right, cool. So I got to the end of my little area there. It's I know it's a little bit blurry on the screen, but I'll I'll hold it closer once I'm complete and we can get a good look at it. Oh man. <laughs> it's hard to zoom this zoom this in. Okay, there we go. Back to normal. All right, so you can see I got my darkest area and actually these two big trees which one kind of like goes to here. The other one goes to like here. Those two big trees are supposed to be dark too. So I'm just going to do them. This one, both of them I can see. They're the only trees in the whole picture I can see the actual trunk. So I'm just going to start with that trunk. Just a straight line going down from both of them. And then I'm going to do... Since they're closer to me, I can see a, almost a different shape. So instead of just a strict zigzag like this, it more looks like that. Like they they kind of have a curve to them. But then that, but closer together. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all, all of them kind of on one side, getting bigger, and then on the other side, getting bigger like that. So just because I'm looking at the black areas or the darkest spots. And that's just kind of what the shape looks like it's doing. And you might have, you know, just drawn trees like this from memory or just from imagination, too. Um, I'm going to fill in the space with some more zigzags. It's funny what how we learn to draw things as children. You know, a smiley face being two dots and a curved line for a nose. Or for a mouth. Um, it's like... It's just the most simple version of something. Um, not super descriptive, but we all know what it means. I just think that was an interesting thing to think about. And trees. We could draw trees maybe like this. And somebody just decided... Oh, I didn't... Can you see what I just said? Draw trees like this. Somebody decided that that's just how you draw trees as kids. Um, but no, you could you could look at a tree yourself and uh, see what it looks like to you, and try a bunch of different scribbles and see which one looks like the most like a tree. And then uh, then there you go. You got your own way of drawing trees that's more special to you. And that just requires looking, using your eyes, and uh, being creative a little bit. All right, so I got my two trees, got my darkest area. So now I have to be a little bit more careful to each area. It gets lighter, 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 lightest. And then I'll copy the mountain lightness onto the um, water here. Actually, there is one other dark shape. Look at this guy. This little... Uh, Kayak. There's two people in a kayak. Might be hard to see. I'm going to. Uh, no, nope, this one. I'm going to zoom up this digital picture so you can see it. All right. See the two um, people in the red kayak here. I'm not using red, I'm using blue. So this is just going to be a black and white version. They are placed. Right around here, and they're, the tops of their heads just about are halfway in the water, so I'm going to use that as a measurement. So here's the top of their head, a little tiny dot I just made, and then here's the bottom. I like to do top and bottom, or else I end up making things too big. I'm actually going to use my fingers here just to measure the width of the, just to measure the width of this guy here. And then I'm just going to go down here. Okay, so it's that wide. So I've got top and bottom, left and right. Now I'm just going to try to draw it in real quick. Just a quick scribble. I want to keep the same about level of detail in this 
little uh, kayaker detail as I do in the rest of my drawing. Because if I have one area that's super highly realistic or detailed and then the rest of it's kind of scribbly, it just doesn't feel right. So I want this guy to be just as kind of scribbly. There. So, um, I guess I could untape this and show you real quick. Here's my little scribbled, scribbled guy. Just kind of, again, I think the height and width, measuring the height and width of something you're drawing is really handy. Um, if not measuring with your fingers, um, th but just measuring that this little, um, their hat was about halfway up from the bottom to the top of the water area. So, um, yeah. Onward we go. Let's do, let's do the, the next darker tree. So that's this area. Um. And then looking at them in their picture, it's instead of left and right zigzags, who also notice the shadow of the mountain too in there, it gets darker again. Um, so I'm gonna uh, pay attention to that while I'm, do while I'm executing this. Actually, they call it rendering when you're actually drawing something. It's uh, called rendering. So as I render these trees, I'm going to uh, pay close attention to that shadow. Anyway, so this is how I'm going to do the trees. I'm going to do, instead of this kind of sideways zigzag like I did for all these trees, I'm going to do an up and down zigzag because all I see is the top of the trees here. For these trees, I saw the side of them. That's why it was darker. Now these trees, I'm seeing the top of, tops of. So I only see like the, the little triangles. So what I'm going to do is just do little triangles, almost like I did this edge, but all the way from left to right several times. There's two areas of grass here I'm just going to avoid a little bit. Um, now how tall, the, you know, I could do triangle shapes like this that are kind of shallow triangles, or I could do more tall like that and I see that these trees follow more of a tall triangle so that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to be careful not to get as close together my lines aren't going to be as close together as these ones because this is um, this is the darkest area so now I want to be a little bit lighter so I'm just going to populate this with trees that are now doing it in a line like this might not be the most fitting for this subject. I'm going to kind of go down just to give it a little bit of the because doing it in a line might flatten out, doing it straight across. I flatten it out, so I'm gonna go a little bit, and I can always fill in with a few more lines, maybe. Now, when you're drawing with something different than a, a marker, you can figure out your own technique of how you're gonna fill these areas. But the main part, after splitting up our big shapes, is how dark or light they are, especially in landscape, to give the effect of it, of the mountain being far away and these trees being close, you really need to pay attention. It's the darkness and the lightness that controls that. So now I'm going to get that shadow shape by just like putting in more of these shapes in that area. Let's see, some looking like that. Just doing more M's. They look like little M's to me. Or V's. I hear the Frozen song going on in the living room. Okay, cool. Um, there's a dark horizontal line I'm just seeing right here at the top of the 
water, so I'm just going to do that. It doesn't need much explanation. I just noticed it. Probably a shadow from the trees or something. All right, it's getting there, huh? It's just with a black Sharpie. Um, so now we're gonna go to the next area, which is significantly lighter. And that's this whole area of trees going up the mountain. And now I don't see this zigzag shape at all. It's kind of one continuous tone of gray, there's not a, like a texture too much to it. So what I'm gonna do, hold on, let me fill in a couple of these, it's bugging me a little bit. Let's get a little bit more texture in these, just to break up my lines. Um, so what I'm gonna do is do more of a dot style. So instead of uh, lines, I'm gonna do more just little dots next to each other, being careful not to get them closer together than this last area. Um, and then which direction could I use? Let me pull up this. So look at the light trees crawling up the mountain. I do see the verticalness of the trees. The, there's like almost up and down. If you look at the dark shadow areas, I 